Church. Appreciate Rudy's family being with us. We've got baptism here in just a little while. And so very thankful for that and glad they're able to come and rejoice with him in such a special day. Uh, for our members back there on the back, uh, don't forget there are the treasurer uh, guidelines and nomination forms. So make sure that you uh, look through the guidelines and then uh, turn in your nomination forms. Good to see Brother Mike Perez back. Amen. And uh, so I've been traveling. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, make sure that you get that turned in. Currently, Brother Wayne McDougald is our treasurer, and I've uh, been doing a fine job at that. And then tonight, tonight's like this bittersweet deal, because we're supposed to start the book of Revelation tonight and going through the study on it. However, it's supposed to be snowing here at about 3 o'clock this afternoon, and uh, everything's supposed to turn to a big thing, ice ball. So, we won't have service tonight. And I was going to kind of wait and then call it a little bit later. But by all accounts, it looks like it's coming. And uh, so don't want everybody, you know, playing crash up derbies on the, the way to church. So anyway, that's it's still coming. Amen. And, uh, and, and that's one of those things where it's kind of like, man, really want to get it started. Uh, but I really want y'all not to die trying to hear it. So. <laughs> That'd be good. Next Sunday also, next Sunday evening, uh, if you're here for a revival, you got to meet the Heatons, Jonathan and Gracie Heaton. Uh, they're missionaries to the UK. And uh, anyway, they're going to be here presenting their ministry next Sunday evening. So that's pretty exciting. Glad to be able to start off the year with missions and, and uh, keeping that right emphasis on that. It's pretty interesting whenever they, they initially called just to let you know um, they were asking about coming down. I said, no, we've already got revival that week. And, and uh, well, he had been speaking with Brother Dan already and uh, they had gotten to talk over the phone and different things of that nature. And of course, if you don't know, the Knickerbockers have a lot of uh, their family, their missionaries. And uh, so they were talking and he said, I just want to be able to meet him. And uh, he said, we're going to be in the area. And that was the thing. They were going to be in the area the same week as revival. And I was like, well, you know, obviously that's not going to work. <clears throat> but anyway, he said, well, can I come? I'd like to meet Brother Dan. I said, well, of course, you know, you can't come to revival. You know? so, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but it was good to be able to speak with them. So they were here for just a little while, and then they took off. They were uh, staying there in uh, Colleen, and so they were headed back that evening. But uh, it worked out with uh, whenever they came, Brother Dale Harris from Emmanuel Baptist in Jacksonville uh, was here, and they're trying to do kind of a mission emphasis this month instead of having a missions conference like they normally do. And uh, he said, this would be great. So they were able to talk, and he said, the 17th works out good for us. Uh, if you can come that morning, he said, we'll, we'll do it. let you teach a Sunday school class and preach the morning service. And he said, then maybe you can find a, a, a place for the evening service. So, well, while you're right here, you might as well come on down here. And so, anyway, all worked out great. And uh, so very thankful for that. Looking forward to that next Sunday as well. And let's all stand together. <clears throat> and we'll start out in a word of prayer. Have a song. And then Brother Ethan's going to give us our devotion. So, Father, we want to thank you so much for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the safety that you've allowed us to be able to be here today. And, Father, I pray, God, that you would speak to each person here. I pray, Lord, that you would draw us close to you and help us, Lord, to be able to honor you in all things. We know these are uncertain times that we're in, but our certainty is in Christ, and we're so thankful for that. Lord, I thank you for uh, Rudy and taking that step to obey the Lord and believers' baptism truly a great first step of obedience, Lord. And, and I pray that you would continue to watch over him, continue to bless him. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing him our way. Uh, Lord, we do pray, Father, for the service today as the word of God goes forth. We pray, Lord, that it convicts hearts, changes lives. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's take your red hymn books while you're standing. Turn to 159. 159. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Redeemer. 
mercy, your friend of man, once ruined by the fall. Thou hast devised salvation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace. Of all earth's kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Brother Ethan, you come. Good morning. If you would take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll read verse 22 through 24. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which God has created in righteousness and true holiness. From this scripture, we see that becoming a, becoming a Christian does not mean we simply changed our mind, but we, but we were saved and it changed our entire citizenship and way of living. We were freed from the eternal slavery of a system that had crept us by sin and which promised unattainable joy. We had changed from being dead into sin, being made and alive in Christ, as Galatians 2.22 says, Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. We are given into the glories of eternal life in Christ Jesus. I like paradoxes. A paradox is defined as a logically self-contradictory statement or a statement that runs contrary to one's expectations. It is, a statement, it is a statement that despite apparently valid reasoning from true premises leads to a seemingly, no, a logically unacceptable conclusion. An example of this and what brought the scripture to mind was the ship of thesis. If you were to place, uh, this, this paradox states, if you were to place a board on a ship with a new one, and continue to do this over time as the ship wears down, replacing every board and sail. Once everything is replaced, it poses a question of whether or not the ship is fundamentally the same ship. It makes you think, and there's not a real conclusive answer, and that's what makes it a paradox. No one can say for sure whether or not it was considered a repaired ship or a completely different one. If you were to take that and apply it to the cells of a human, we find that the same conclusion, we find the same conclusion or the lack thereof. As your cells are constantly uh, dying and being produced, it poses the same question of whether or not you're physically the same person compared to the completely replaced body of cells seven to ten years ago. When reading this scripture, we find that the process of being the new man is through the Holy Spirit's leading. Only by salvation through the sacrifice of Christ can we be deemed this new man, which as the verse says, after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We were released from the bondage of sin and death, which ultimately led to hell, and changed into a new life of true righteousness that leads to heaven. To become a Christian means that we take off our former way of life, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, are severed from our old, original, self-centered life, which is corrupt, and into a precious union with our Savior and communion with our God. This morning, just like your body is replacing cells, constantly, I encourage you to do the same with your walk with Christ. Heed the Holy Spirit's correction and seek God's ways over your own by reading His Word. And finding what 2 Timothy 3.16-17 says, The prophet of doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, that your new man of God may be perfect, perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And I leave those thoughts with you. Amen. Great reminder. Let's all stand one more time. Turn to page 410. Page 410. Faith is the victory. <clears throat> Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the bow and veils below, let all our strength be heard. 
is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, I saw the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they like a whirlwind spread, swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find, drawn up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head with truth all gird above. The earth shall tremble beneath our tread and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Jimmy, would you ask a blessing on our offering, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. We thank you, Lord, for the blood you shed, the life you gave yes. on the cross, Lord, to pay our sin debt and full past, present, and future. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are unchanging, that you are the same <coughs> today, today, and forever, and that you are our light and darkness and our hope and faith here in you. Amen. We pray, Lord, as we hear the preaching of your word here today, that you will help us to align our hearts with your word and with your will. Pray, Lord, you'll help us to be doers of the word, not of yours only. We pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit will be among us and it will convict hearts, change lives, and call in the lost. Pray, Lord, that all we do and say here today will be pleasing to you. We ask, Lord, that you will take this offering, bless it, multiply it, use it for your kingdom work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please do be seated.
Hope that's your testimony today. Amen. Hope every year it just gets sweeter and sweeter serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's turn over to page 210. <clears throat> page 210. Wonderful grace of Jesus. You can remain seated on this one. That'll help you with your breathing. <clears throat> no passing out. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame, oh magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame, oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name, wonderful grace of Jesus, Reaching the most divine by his transforming power, making him God's dear child, purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity. And the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful, the matchless grace of Jesus. Deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparkling like the fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame, who oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. Amen, great singing. Now let's turn over to 224. And if you're able, let's stand together one more time. <clears throat> 224, there should be showers of blessing. <clears throat> Pay attention to these wonderful words. There should be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. <clears throat> there should be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. Y'all keep singing as the choir comes down. These showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. 
Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Amen. One more congregational this evening, morning. 116. 116. He leadeth me. <clears throat> By water still or troubled sea, still tis his hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for my his Clasp thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content whatever lot I see, since tis my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me by his own. Special for you this morning. I'm getting used to bifocals. <clears throat> There's that too far, too close, just right. <laughs> if I if I skip a line, you'll know. Sure. 
To die for your sin, I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. If you would, let's take your Bibles. <clears throat> let's go to the Gospel of John this morning. John chapter number 16. Hardest things trying to do, especially after living proof has been here. <laughs> Hopefully you got short memories. Amen. <laughs> John chapter number 16. Whenever you find your place, if you're able... I'm going to invite you to stand with me one more time as we honor the reading of God's Word. Just going to read uh, one verse, and, uh, and then we're going to look at several throughout this chapter. But John chapter 16, I want you to go down to verse number 33. Verse 33, <clears throat> a very timely verse for us today. Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want to bring a message this morning of good news and trying times. Good news and trying times. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the hymns that magnify the name of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to rejoice in your presence, to be able to know that you have all things in your hands, Lord, and that you're doing a perfect work. And Father, we just thank you for that. And Lord, as we look upon your word in this hour and this day, I pray, God, that you would meet the needs that we have as individuals, Lord, and oftentimes we have fears and, and different things that come against us. I pray, God, that you would fortify us in your word. And we want to thank you for it today. Lord, if there's one here that does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, they're not sure if they died today that they would go to heaven. Lord, I pray that today would be the day of salvation, Lord, that no decision is put off in this hour, this time. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please do be seated. 
If there's ever been a time where we really need some good news, it's the day that we live in today. Amen? We are surrounded by bad news. And you think about this, just in a short matter of time, very short, just over a few months, we've got a virus that's shutting down life. We've got a government that's on a steep decline into socialism. Uh, we've got civil unrest toward authority. Media and technology is steering the very thoughts of people. Isn't it amazing how conservative, uh, conservative media is being deplatformed and uh, you know, before they said, oh, well, here's another media source that you could use instead of something that is, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, masking conservative views or something. Now they're taking the whole thing down. And, uh, you know, they're kind of telling you what it is that's okay to think and what it is that's not okay to think. Uh, we've, been, we've seen hatred displayed on every front. I want you to get a hold of that because there's been as much hatred on display in the church as it is that we see out on the Capitol steps, the hearts of people toward other people. It's a lot of things going against the cause of Christ. So the disciples, I think about them, they were, they were going through a similar time, except even more drastic. They were in an age where the Jews and Gentiles were at odds, uh, much like political parties today, and, uh, and except probably even more so. Uh, during the uh, crucifixion, the crowds were influenced by the religious leaders to, to release the one that was guilty and to crucify the one that was innocent. said, so this is the way you're supposed to think. This is the voice you're supposed to have. The Lord was going to the cross for the sins of the whole world. And many people weren't even paying attention to it. Can I tell you the same thing happens today whenever we get our eyes off the Word of God, whenever we get our eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the cause of Christ, where we can set our eyes on all, all of the affections of the world and we miss the peace that God gives in His Word. And yet here He is, the Lord is still making provision for those disciples that follow Him to continue faithfully serving God with joy. He's constantly telling them, think about it, He's the one being crucified. He knows it. Amen? And yet He's still inspiring His disciples to be able to live a life of joy. And Jesus was seeing to the needs of His people. So in our text verses, uh, the disciples, they're spending their last day with the Lord. So from chapters 13 on, this is the last 24 hour period with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and there's a breakdown of how the Lord is meeting the needs of His disciples during this trying time. He's got a lot of different things that He's sharing in each one of the chapters. Chapter Chapter 14, he's talking about uh, their eternal home and the journey that it's going to take to get uh, to for them to get there. And then chapter 15, he talks about the fruitful life. Then chapter 16, he's preparing them for the the Holy Spirit to guide them whenever he was he was gone. And in these three chapters, we're going to see how the Lord uh, gives an alternative to His people in an otherwise hostile and uncertain surrounding. When everything seems to be in disarray, when things are falling apart, He's still meeting the needs. And, and it's interesting, He uses a phrase, uh, an expression that calls it out in these chapters. And here's what you see in verse number 33. He says, These things I have spoken unto you. That's the phrase. These things I have spoken unto you unto you. And, and we're going to see that numerous times through the chapters, five times in fact, uh, about God's Word. And in their day, as well as our day, it's the Word of God that is the answer for every one of us. In the trying times that we have and the hardships that we face, it's the Word of God that makes the difference. We need to get back to that, that part where the Lord saying, these things have I spoken unto you. We look around, civil unrest, what happens? These things have I spoken unto you. Well, there's a lot of chaos that's going on between people. Uh, these things have I spoken unto you. A lot of hatred toward uh, one person from another person. These things have I spoken unto you. Well, I've got all this personal anxiety that's there. These things have I spoken unto you. There's so many options and opportunities that God gives us every day to get back to His Word, to honor Him and to be able to see the truth that He gives us. Remember, Jesus says, sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Whenever God's people that are supposed to be a sanctified, set-apart body of believers need to be sanctified and set-apart, was He or was He used? He used the Word of God. Amen. And that's what He's doing with His disciples as well. He says, in all the trying times, get back to the Word of God. And can I tell you today, as, as difficult it is, as it is to watch the things going on in our nation, get back to the Word of God. And we're going to see a few things that he speaks to uh, about that, and I think it will be a help to us. First off, uh, God's Word reminds us of His communing. God's Word reminds us of His communing. Now I want you to go back in chapter 24. And let's go down to verse number 23. Chapter 14, verse number 23. Did I say 24? 
I, I thought that sounded right coming out of my mouth, but it was absolutely wrong. So John chapter 14, verse 23. So Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Now watch this, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you. He says, these are my words, the word of God. Here it is, I've spoken these things, being yet present with you, verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In times of trouble, there's often the thought that kind of prevails in our mind, even if we don't express it in our, by our lips, that, that we're just kind of left all alone. We just feel like completely ostracized from the rest of the world. We, we feel like there's nobody, there's no comforting that's there. And, and we think about the events of our country as being, uh, you know, man, this is the end of life. Look at it. Here it is. Boy, this is terrible. Everything's going to pot. Yeah, it kind of is for us. Uh, but, but think about this. Uh, it may be the end of the way of life as we know it. You know, there's a lot more involved than just us. Amen. There's a lot more at stake here than just the United States, and I'm not making light of that. There are countries that have collapsed throughout the expanse of time. That's why, uh, that's why any, uh, any good news person will tell you, look back in history and see what happens whenever you go into socialism or something like that. It has not prevailed one time. Not once. Where it's like, this was wildly successful. I'm so glad we did that. Not once. People escaped those countries. It leads to tyranny that's actually there before it's even started. But not to get political. So our own political parties, think about it, have changed sides over the last hundred years. It's happened. Study your history. Amen. Listen, what am I saying? We are far from a stable government. Hate to say it, but we are a long ways away from that. And any time a government gets away from the Word of God, it is heading toward collapse. God told them that from the very beginning. Remember, He was supposed to be their God. But they said, oh, we want a king to rule over us. And He says, all right, I'll give you a king, but just so you know, it's going to crater. And it did. God is supposed to be the one in control. Now, I love our country, but my confidence is not in the rule of man. I don't care what party that they're in. My confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And my prayer is that our country is going to return to Him. And can I tell you, that comes back to the work of the church. That's the responsibility of each Christian in this room today is to be able to share the Word of God because that is the gospel of our salvation. That is the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what's so special about what the Lord shares about His communing. And that, that communing of God with man. Think about that. God created man for His glory, and God desires to have fellowship with His creation. Isn't that amazing? I don't know about you, but that just blows me away. Because if I was God, and I made this little pea brain person like Brother Jim here, the last thing I'd want to do is talk to him. <laughs> I mean, like, what are you going to give me? You know? but, but God, He desires fellowship with man. Man, in His glory, what a great thing. There's a great picture of this. I want you to keep your spot here, but turn back a few pages to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, so turn left 20 pages or so, and you'll be there. Uh, but it's a great picture of that communing that God desires with His people whenever you look at the prodigal son in Luke chapter number 15. Now, the short version of this is the, uh, the son wanted to go his own way. He wanted to do his own thing. He wanted to get the inheritance. He says, I want my money now. I don't wait for you to die. I'm out of here. And the father allows him. He says, okay, I'll, I'll let you take yours and, and go. And he did. And he, he left and he went and joined himself to the godless pagan world around him and lived according to their way. Uh, he wasted his inheritance. He, was, he, was, he got to the point where he was starving for what he used to have freely at the father's house. He said, man, this is who I, who I used to have, who I used to, to be, and, and the provision I used to have. He said, I blew everything. It was a wrong decision. He admits it. Amen. You know, there comes a point where all of us get to the, the point where we say, you know, we need to admit we made a wrong decision. Whether it's from a national perspective, a personal decision, sometimes we say, you know, I made the wrong choice. I made the wrong call. I went the wrong way. And it's good for us to acknowledge that. And then notice what he says, chapter 15, and verse number 17, we see a progression here. It says, and when he came to himself, he came to himself. All of a sudden, he remembered. Amen. He came to himself. He says, man, what in the world am I thinking? 
finally got to that point. He came to himself and says, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He repented. That's what that repentance is. He said, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He says, man, all of a sudden he's got to change mind about where he is, the situation that he's in. He says, I've done the wrong thing. I made the wrong choice. And then notice uh, verse number 19, he says, no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He had a desire to be put back in action, but he, he's putting himself back under the Father's authority. He's already, he's thinking it through. He says, this is what it is that needs to happen. Now watch verse number 20. He returns. He arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I love that. Man, what a picture, amen. He gets to the point where he's, he understands where he is. It's not where it is that he's supposed to be. He says, I, I made a bad decision. I made a wrong choice. I went the wrong way. Man, things are going bad. They went from bad to worse. He's out there uh, feeding on the husk of the, that the swine wouldn't eat. Remember, he's a Jewish person. Jewish, Jews and swine don't mix. It's like me getting a job of milking possums. Amen? No, I don't think so. That's the way they look at swine. They get to the point, and he's like, this is filthy. I can't believe this. How did I ever get to this position? I'm getting back to where I'm supposed to be. He has a change of mind. He gets back, and he's coming to the Father, and the Father sees him a great ways off and runs and falls on his neck. You know, isn't that great? It's just like salvation. You know what? You can be in a pew, and you can realize, you know what? I'm not saved. And about the time that you say, Lord, I, I got to get down to the aisle. You know what he does? About the time you take that step of obedience to follow the Lord and say, you know what? I'm not saved. I'm going to trust him. You know what he does? Boy, he just meets you right there. So where is that point of salvation? I'm going to be interested to know whenever you get to heaven. Yes. Amen. Where was it exactly? Was it whenever you had that in the moment in a twinkling of an eye, whenever the muscles were about to twitch and say, all right, I'm going to do it. That God said, done. Yeah. Man, he's looking upon the heart of man. He's looking at that interest to, to be able to get back in, in, in a father's good steward. But, but here it is. So he meets the needs. He runs out. He meets that, that uh, first son. But then that's not all. Amen. They started having this, this big party for the son. They return. Makes me think of our neighbor. Quick story. Across the road. He passed away a couple of years ago. He was from New Jersey. And uh, had a great accent. And uh, we don't have one here. But, but anyway, he did. But after the, whenever the parsonage was being built and everything, he came over and looked at it, and he says, oh, this is nice. He said, whenever, whenever um, you get it all built, you've got to have a big party. Everybody's going to come over, and all the people in the neighborhood are going to hate you because your house is nicer than theirs. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what's happening. They're having a big party. Amen? The sun is returned, man. He is restored. Everything's going good. <clears throat> Notice what happens. Uh, verse 26, the elder son, here's something that's going on. He's out in the field. He, he can't, uh, he drew nigh to the house, heard the music, heard the dances. Verse 26, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. Look at that verse 28. He was angry. Would not go in. Now here's the part. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Isn't that something? So here's the, here's the elder brother. Uh, he's upset because nobody ever gave him a party. And, and he's, he's thinking, I'm not going in there. And guess what happens? The father comes out and entreats him. You know, it's interesting whenever you read this, it seems like the father is always wanting his sons to stay close. Amen. It's like he always wants them in fellowship and in good communion. Whether they're tempted like the first brother of those things of the world.